boys and girls, thank you very much for joining us once again here in the Meat Militia, where super secret, highly classified operations continue this week. Our special guest today is Annabelle, who is having a bit of a celebration, aren't you Annabelle? Tell us about it. Yeah, so I launched my YouTube channel uh, and I've brought to a thousand subs now, so I'm monetized, which is key. And I don't really mind if I, if I don't grow rapidly now, moving on. Um, but at least I can, you know, get the message out and make it more, more of a, something that I focus on. Because obviously, um, if I'm doing it and not getting paid, then it makes it more difficult to do, um, having to, you know, earn money somehow. Uh, that being said, so on my channel so far, I've been doing interviews predominantly. Um, in fact, that's pretty much all I've been doing, uh, which is cool. I've, I've brought some really great interviews lined up as well. Um, but I can let you guys know on here, I guess, as an update. Uh, I was potentially going to make an update video, but I don't think I really need to. I'm going to be doing less and less interviews and... Um, I guess it's more of a life update as well. I'm going to be working with a farmer who is on my channel, uh, John Cook. Um, he is based in the UK. And so I'm going to be going there in February uh, working with him. And so I'm going to be making a lot more content around farming um, and regenerative farming and, and kind of what he's doing. Um, so I'm really hoping people like that. I'm not sure how it's going to go because it is very different to what I've been doing. But it is something that I want to show on my channel because I think it's important that people see um, what what it is like, you know, living on the land, working on the land and the importance of farming and looking after the farmers. And, you know, at the moment they're under such attack. So I think that it might be worth doing that. Seeing as the other carnivore channels that I've seen they do interviews with people, uh, so it's it's kind of a lot of interviewing the same people. And um, you know, if that's already out there, at least I can do something maybe a little bit different because people can go and, and watch the interviews on other channels. Awesome, awesome. Well, you might not mind, Annabelle, if you don't grow rapidly, but we do here in the Meat Militia. So your instructions, my Meat Militia soldiers, are: if you are not subscribed to Annabelle's fine, fine YouTube channel, you know what to do. Go and make that um, make that right. Tell us what the YouTube channel is. So um, it was under Carnival Olympic Coach. I changed it to Annabelle's Awareness only because of the, the change in the content going slightly more towards the farming stuff. And also I want to attract people to my channel who are not necessarily carnival at the moment and who might not even be on a, you know, a low carb or proper human diet as Ken Berry calls it um, so that I can get more people there because I feel like if it's just carnival then it kind of stays in the same circle and I, I guess the idea is to get more and more people to understand what this is about and why this is uh, you know something that is not just a fad but actually a sustainable way of life. Awesome. Yeah. When is that happening? So my flight back to the UK is on the 5th of February so any time after that I think I might still have a few interviews to be posting from then onwards. Um, I, I've got a really great interview. I'm really looking forward to this with Gerald Pollock coming up, and that will be in February. So I'll still be doing some interviews here and there, but at the moment I've been posting quite a few quite frequently, and it will just be changing to much more farming content and then also throwing in some of the, the stuff about the limbic system and limbic work as well. Cool. I want to say to everyone who's watching this video, I know that you subscribed to a very young carnivore before and it didn't turn out very well, but Annabelle is really intelligent and she has a lot of stuff and I think that uh, once her channel gets going and she gets to share her genius, it will be worth it. So definitely go and subscribe. I'm kind of glad you mentioned that only because I just want to say that I um, could have started my YouTube channel three about three years ago now when I first heard of and started the carnivore diet. But because I was still in the process of researching it and not knowing what it was and whether it was sustainable or not, I didn't want to start a YouTube channel just to not know what I was talking about or to not know where it was going. Or, you know, to then later on say, oh, guys, sorry, you know, I messed up. Turns out this thing is just kind of stupid and it's going to kill you. So I waited a really long time because I wanted to make sure this actually works and, you know, um, that I, I'm not just going to be going along with something and then kind of, I don't know, ruin my credibility or reputation. And so uh, I personally believe that the carnivore diet, as in meat, salt, water, is optimal. Um, I don't think fruit and honey are optimal. I don't think, um, you know, adding in 
a lot of that stuff or having 200 grams of fruit a day is is optimal i don't think you have to eat all of your meat raw i think raw meat is great if it's good quality but i don't think it is it's a rule that you have to live by that like if you don't eat raw meat you're not carnivore or you're suboptimal as a human or anything um but that's after a lot of time spent and research and experimentation and stuff so so yeah just for the viewers watching um I'm not going to go in down kind of a direction that is away from uh, carnivore or, or more into the fruit and honey. I know that's not good. <laughs> it's actually pretty terrible doing a lot of fruit and honey and stuff. So, so yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Yes, equally glad. And you're not going to go crazy and say that if you cook your meat, you have nothing to do with carnivore and you are fucking slave. <laughs> No, to be honest with the raw meat, the thing is people need to be careful because although I think raw meat is great, there are some people who really can't handle it. And and you have to take into, into respect and into account the wider population. We are looking at people who are really, really sick. They typically don't come to a carnival diet for fun. They come because this is really the last thing they've got left. And so if some people were to eat raw meat, just because of that a place where their gut health is, they could get really sick. Um, and I don't think people really should be eating supermarket meat raw. I'm not 100% sure if there's, uh, if there is a massive difference, but I wouldn't do that. I would just, you know, from a farm as fresh as possible if you're going to eat raw meat. I love eating meat raw, but I don't do it exclusively. And, you know, some things you have to really cook. I don't think you should be eating raw pork, that's for sure. Um, and then I know people have spoken about parasites um, and how they're not an issue. I did used to believe uh, that it could potentially not be an issue and they could be symbiotic. But um, after coming back from Bulgaria, I had pretty bad mold toxicity and mold and parasites go hand in hand typically. Um, I felt horrible for months on end. I felt like my digestion was off. I couldn't, yeah, I just couldn't digest anything. Constantly felt full, like something was really, really wrong. Um, I spoke to a couple of people including people who have been on my channel who said that you need to try um, something that is actually banned here now. Uh, so I'll use a code. Um, it rhymes with Heimerlectin. And um, I did it. And you would not believe the parasites that came out. Like, these were massive. And after that, I just felt like I had my body back, like a completely different person. But, you know, that just that was enough for me to think that um, okay, parasites are not good. You know, like we shouldn't be wanting to have parasites in our body. And I don't think raw meat can necessarily be the biggest cause of parasites. I think for eating things like unwashed fruits and vegetables and drinking you know dirty water and swimming in dirty water and um, being exposed to fungus, those are much bigger issues. I really think it's difficult to get parasite from uh, from meat raw or cooked. But still, it, I don't think we should be inviting them in because there are parasites that can even, you know, cause our thyroids to malfunction and, and things. It's, and if you think about it, they want to live and we want to live, but they want to reclaim us as the host. So who's going to win in this situation? They're not just going to eat up the fungus and the toxins in our body and then, you know, miraculously die off and think, oh, my job's done here. They're going to want to reclaim you as the host because everybody or oh, every organism on earth wants to survive <laughs> that's kind of the whole point so um it's kind of a war i think yep quite right i can't imagine personally going through that and having the situation of passing parasites and things it's one of my worst nightmares um i, I did that interview last year with maddie where she was talking about two and three foot worms that she's been passing for several years and i'm like oh god really not not the one i think everyone's got their one thing that they would think that's the worst thing in the world um perhaps it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world but i certainly that's not something i want to experience you would rather keep them in than having them out well i mean we have to assume that they're there i guess um but you know maybe they're like um symbiotes with me maybe they are communicating deeper truths about the universe to me or giving me my special jedi powers or something Oh, hang on. I don't have any special Jedi powers. Mm. Maybe some Heimerwichten would be a good idea. Mm. Heimerwichten, yes. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. Okay, right. So there's um, talk of, if not already, action surrounding some things that you've planned with Scotty, who I forget what he's even calling himself now because he keeps changing his 
his handle for his YouTube channel. I think he's back to Carnival Lion. Is he back to Carnival yeah, Lion again? He's, he's back to Carnival Lion. Poor Scott has been shadow banned. So I know he has been watching your live streams. He's been commenting and he's been struggling to get any of his comments through. Apparently, they're not really seen. Um, he's not really able to engage on YouTube. He did a series um, of people who have managed to pure the big C uh, with fasting. And so after that, poor Scott has been shadow banned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and so, yeah, he's back to Carnival Lion. Um, Scott has gone through his own healing journey. And I don't want to speak for him, but he's been influenced a lot by working on the limbic system as well as sticking to a, a clean diet. And... Um, as we know, that people who do come to the carnival diet are not just the average person trying to get a little bit healthier or lose weight. Some people might do it for that reason, but most people are truly sick. And so there is a lot of trauma involved um, and that can be emotional and physical. So working on the limbic system um, and the nervous system can be quite important. And for those who don't know the limbic system, um, it is basically a system in your brain comprising of the thalamus, the hypothalamus, amygdala, basically just other centers in it. It feeds your emotional response. So fight, flight, freeze, um, anything to do with, uh, uh, well, procreating and, and survival essentially. And a lot of people can get stuck uh, in a response where they're in fight or flight all the time without really even necessarily knowing where, you know, you're, you're just constantly under stress. And it's this low kind of underlying chronic inflammation uh, which means that you're not able to digest food as well. You're not able to get the nutrients that you need from your food. So there are people who could be doing the carnival diet. They're doing everything right, but it's not necessarily working. And um, that could be more to do with the fact that their bodies are just in a state where they can't digest. You know, they're not in rest and digest mode. So then they're just going to be lacking. And it's kind of like you could be, you know, just throwing buckets of water at a fire and uh, actually you just need to really work on getting the fire down with a much better weight. And nutrition isn't always going to work for every condition. Whereas, um, to be honest, actually with the carnivore diet, uh, if you use this alongside limbic system training, I think that um, it's very powerful because you're going to be reducing your inflammation or completely lowering it down with a carnivore diet in the first place. So um, for a lot of people, you know, we know Brett Lloyd, for example, if he eats sugar, we know what's going to happen there. And he's not the only person. I've seen other people who have similar experiences. And for those people, uh, staying on a strict carnival diet is incredibly important. So I think that, again, when we go online and say things about fruit and honey or, um, you know, seasonal eating, which I, I think seasonal eating is great, but still I'm careful about who I, I speak to when I say things. Um, we need to be careful because some people cannot touch sugar um, and some people are much more damaged than others. And so we need to cater for those as well. And it's not really fair to leave them out of the demographic just because they're not, you know, trying to achieve a six pack or get shredded and, um, and you know, be surfing six hours a day. They're the people who just want to live and be happy and see their grandkids um, and, uh, yeah, have a fulfilled life. So with the with that being said you know the carnival diet just meat salt water i think is very therapeutic alongside limbic system training i think that no matter what approach you're going to do if you're seeing a psychologist or therapist or doing some kind of nervous system training i think diet should always be a big foundation because you can't really achieve much if you're not having a, a you know a good diet and that's not in place it's it's really a foundation um i'm, I'm just curious like if someone came to you and they wanted to kind of get help where would you start let's say someone who's been really sick they have a lot of problems with leaky gut they they don't seem to be able to digest like meat and stuff how does the limbic system training comes into like a case like that like, give us well, an example funny enough, it wouldn't even come into it solely you know just alone um you would always start with the diet first and the foundations so it's kind of like building a house. You'd have to start with the with the nutrition, which I guess would be your foundation, and then build your way up. So sleep, getting that uh, under control, and circadian rhythm, I think is really important alongside anything. Um, if you're not sleeping, you know, we so something that's been apparently fairly recently discovered is the glymphatic system, which is an area in the brain which controls the removal of waste. And 
primarily this is this is a signaling um, that happens throughout the night when you're asleep. So if you're not sleeping properly, then all of your communication between the gut and the brain is is confused and it's kind of messed up and going in the wrong direction. And that's another reason people don't get results. So obviously nutrition, sleep, circadian rhythm, and then working on the nervous system alongside that. Because with working on the nervous system, it's just retraining the brain. It's just brain rewiring. It's not anything specific that you have to do that's outside of your normal routine besides just rewiring the way that you think, feel, and speak about yourself. Um, there are a, a number of different steps people can take. So, you know, physical actions, uh, visualizations, that kind of thing. It's just an, uh, it almost kind of is an add on or the cherry on the top of the cake or, you know, the butter on top of the steak. But still, it's something that is um, going to get you quite far along because I don't know, it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Do you have a carnivore diet, but a really bad mindset and you're miserable and depressed and don't want to do anything? Or do you start with the mindset, which then allows you to, you know, eat better and, and stick to doing things and being able to, uh, I guess, do the, the, have the disciplines to stay onto a, a carnivore diet or sleep well and change your habits and change the way you think. It kind of comes hand in hand, I think, because if you're eating just meat, but then at the same time, you know, you're not sleeping and you you hate the world and you're angry, you know, you're only going to be that happy, aren't you? <laughs> yep. Absolutely. All right. So limbic system, correct diet, sleep, sunshine? Sunshine, yeah, incredibly important. Part of the circadian stuff is seeing light. So at the moment here, it's winter, so no sunlight really. Um, <laughs> pretty much just this grey overhead and snow. Um, but still around, you know what time, you know, if you know what time sunrise is, so here I think it's around 9 a.m. Oh, you go outside about 10 minutes for sunrise, uh, just so that you get the signal into your body because the light is still there. Just because the sun isn't there, it doesn't make it obsolete. The light is still there, it's important, and you can give your body those correct signals. And then the other thing, if anybody's like me in a cold environment, they can actually use cold exposure. Um, I also want to say that I've heard people recently, um, very strange comments about how cold exposure, cold therapy is um, is terrible for you long term and, uh, you know, you're stressing your body out and it's just, you know, pumping adrenaline through your veins. It's actually not true. It really calms down the nervous system. Uh, it's really helpful and it does give a lot more benefits. It can boost dopamine up to 400%. Um, it can help people sleep. Uh, it shifts your fat, so essentially uh, turns your adipose tissue into brown fat, which you can then burn. It it makes you more resilient, and there are just so many benefits, physiological and you know for your brain health as well to cold exposure. It obviously, if you overdo anything, it's not good. If you were to eat five kilos of meat a day, you could say that's potentially not good. But at the same time, it's the dose that makes the poison. You know, it's not that oh, all cold, cold plunging is bad, um, and you should never do it. And you know, I think that uh, there's been a tendency recently for views to get fairly extremist in terms of, you know, all coffee is bad or all cold is bad, and you should only do things that feel good and, and are comfortable. But you know, as humans, we're very resilient and we should actually be adapting and, and I guess, improving our physiology by exposing ourselves to things that are not always comfortable. And um, on the topic of even things like coffee, I know a lot of people drink coffee. I don't think it's the source of all evil. Um, for some people who are incredibly caffeine sensitive, it's never going to work. Uh, you have to know who you are. And for other people, it can actually help with detoxification. So, Caffeine can help with phase two liver detoxification. So for some people who maybe have estrogen dominance, uh, it might be able to help. But again, the dose makes the poison. If you're going to drink 10 cups of coffee a day, not great. If you have one uh, and you can take coffee and you feel like it's helping you, then I don't really see a problem. Awesome. And what's your exercise routine look like? Um, so it varies. I train between three to five days a week. Um, but I've been training for about four or five years now. Um, so I'm fairly, you know, kind of into the strength training. If I were starting out, I, you know, and let's say I was somebody who hadn't really ever exercised before, was very sedentary, um, maybe had some issues. I'd actually initially, 
work on lowering the inflammation in the muscle tissue through the diet and sleeping, and then working on uh, gaining flexibility and lower back strength first, and then maybe starting with some basic movements like squat, bench, deadlift, chin up, that those kinds of things, and just in, you know gaining strength, but also improving flexibility at the same time. But as for me personally, I train between three to five days a week, which is quite a lot. And when I uh, go to the UK and work on this farm, I'm going to have to switch over to more calisthenics style training just because I'm not going to have a gym then, um, which will be interesting. So that'll be the first time in five years that I haven't trained in a proper gym. But I'm excited to see <laughs> what's what's going to happen with that. I'm still going to stick to to training in one way or another, but it will definitely be more of a calisthenics style and, and outside and uh, that's another thing, actually. I think for people just maybe uh, getting outside and exposing themselves to fresh air uh, would offer a lot of benefit. And even doing something like sprints, if you don't have access to a gym, doing something like sprints can be really good, um, can stimulate muscle growth through the myokines. And yeah, it's, it's great. So you don't actually have to necessarily be a bodybuilder and, and go and train and, and lift heavy weights. If you are not able to, there's so many other things you can do. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious about this farm. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going to happen on the farm? What, why you have chosen to kind of do that thing and what's, what's your thinking behind that? All right, so when I got back from Bulgaria, I had a choice of staying in Estonia and working on a bison farm with a, a bison farmer here. Oh yeah, which is really cool. Um, there's a, I've been there quite a lot. Uh, I actually helped my friend to get to bison from his farm uh, and wrangle them, but it didn't go so well until the vet showed up and he had to kind of do most of the work. So anyhow, that's a separate story. But yeah, so I had the choice to work with this bison farmer here and stay in Estonia or uh, potentially go back to the UK and work with this farmer, um, John, from uh, his farm's called Dora's Dairy. Uh, so when uh, 2020 happened and the lockdown and stuff uh, started, I actually became friends with John, who uh, was... Um, he was great. He he was kind of very aware of everything going on and uh, that kind of already bonded us. And uh, he does raw dairy, which is great. Uh, that's actually what made me find him. I was looking for raw dairy and I was surprised to find that anybody was even selling it in the area. Uh, he's got a great farm. And um, as of recent, he does need a little bit more help. Uh, it's mo mostly just him by himself working now. So he does really want to expand and grow. He's got a great market and a great community of like-minded, aware and awake people who value good quality meat and raw dairy and good quality food in general. So um, he is looking for someone to help out. So uh, that's kind of been my choice and I've been debating whether to stay or whether to go back. But I think ultimately what it has come down to is the fact that I have a really good relationship with uh, Farmer John. Uh, I've known him for a long time. And the fact that we're on the same page about pretty much everything, you know, he's he's carnivore himself. Um, he loves the carnivore diet. It's helped him in so many ways. Um, and the, the direction he wants to grow with his farm uh, has a lot more in line with what I want to do. Um, and then with the bison farm here in Estonia, well, firstly, I'm really not a fan of this climate, I have to say, <laughs> just because the winter is too long and, and snowy and cold. And I can't imagine, you know, spending another year not being able to put my, my bare feet on the ground throughout the winter because it's completely covered in snow. It can be romantic for a week or two. And then after that, you just want, want it to go away. Um, so there's that. And also, I think that it. I've been I've spent quite a lot of time alone uh, for the last five or six months. And if I were to work on this bison farm in Estonia, I know it'd be fairly lonely because, you know, Farmer John, he has people coming and going uh, on the farm all day. He's got this very cute little shed where he sells raw milk and eggs. And it's a real community. You know, people come, they chat. Um, it, it's a, it's kind of part of the day. You know, he loves talking to his clients and has got good relationships with them. Whereas here in Estonia, I'd just be on the farm by myself all day doing uh, farm chores. And um, that is, you know, ideal working on a farm, but just I don't think that I do very well to be alone again for such a long period of time. And uh, I really want to build up this community and help him with that. So when I'm on the farm, I guess I'll just be helping with whatever he's doing, filming a lot of content, helping to um, grow the farm, improve some of the systems that are already in place, uh, maybe launch a few products, some kind of memberships and subscriptions, and let's see what we can do with it, you know? 
awesome sounds really really good okay with all of that said and done congratulations once again very much on the thousand subs on your channel that is a really meaningful landmark and stepping stone for those who don't know that's the level at which you can uh, get your channel monetized and make it worth doing as a can as a as an enterprise i guess in terms of that um Tell us again about all your different social media connectivities. Where can people find you? Where can they get hold of you? All of that. So you can find me on Instagram. Um, I think it's just my name, Annabelle Smithson, on Instagram. And then on YouTube, just Annabelle's Awareness. I did have Facebook, but not anymore. And I'm really glad about that. You know, I feel like I had to just have one social media platform less in my life to, to you know, be on and worry about. So. Um, you can find me there. You can also find me on, uh, there's a, a mighty network, the Carnival Revolution. Uh, if you want to join, there's a free part of the network. And then there's also a paid monthly challenge. Um, it's great. We've brought Jess, Serena, and a couple of other great coaches on there. So if people want to be part of a community, they can always join and, and I'll be on there as well. Uh, I'll be active. We do four calls a week, so I'll be on at least two. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. You can find me on Scott's channel, The Carnival Line, occasionally um, co-hosting interviews. Uh, despite the fact that he's shadow banned, he has got really great content and he'll have more. So I'm going to check him out as well. Awesome. Awesome. Very, very good. Yes, I interviewed Serena actually earlier today, as it turns out, for a, for a follow-up interview. And then later on down the track, probably next month, we'll do a live Q&A with her and i've got to get jess back again as well because she's great value who else is in involved in that is apart from serena and jess and yourself there are a couple of other coaches uh someone calls uh carnival bills i think on instagram um we've got another coach i can't remember what her instagram name is but she does a lot to do with thyroid and female health um, I think it might be growing in, in the number of coaches who are coming on, so it's constantly going to be changing. But Jess and Serena are the founders and owners of this. And yeah, as you said, they're so sweet. Uh, they love helping people. And what I love about the network is the fact that they're always there to help. So, you know, they don't limit you and say, OK, well, you know, your time's up or you've joined this meeting and that's the only place we answer your questions. Just if anybody needs support, there'll always be someone there really eager to help. So. Uh, yeah, and the fact is, well, another thing that's great is the fact that people do have different experiences and different opinions. We don't all necessarily share all the same views all the time. And I think that's what's great is because we can all, you know, learn from our experiences and then help somebody in the best way that we all know possible um, and not necessarily just stick to one thing or have to all feel like we have to, you know, follow the same narrative. Uh, so it's it's nice, you know, it's a great community of people just sharing their, their successes and, and really trying to better their health. Awesome, awesome. Well, once again, thank you very much for your time. Do appreciate that. We should probably close with a bit of a joke about, you know, it's amazing that someone would move from somewhere to the UK for better weather. <laughs> Incredible. I know, isn't that insane? But the UK is like Italy compared to Estonia, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it would be. Tell you what, if you want some real sunshine and good weather, I was going to say come to New Zealand, but actually this summer so far hasn't got kicked off. It's rained a lot. It's been cooler than it has been previously. We've had a couple of hot days. It's mm. been good. Come and visit anyway. Yes, come and visit anyway. And I'd love stay. To visit yeah. New Zealand. I don't know if I'm allowed into the country, but if I am, then I'd love to visit at some point. Right, why wouldn't you be allowed? It's, it's, we let just about anybody in here, don't we? <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Yeah, well, they let, they let Swedish people in, so, you know, all good. All right, listen, Annabelle, thank you very much for your valuable time this morning, your time, this afternoon, our time. Do appreciate it very much. Once again, congratulations on the on the building of your network there. Long may it continue. My meet militia, our meet militia, you know the drill. Get across there, subscribe to all of this stuff, like everything, subscribe to everything, hit the bell icon, share it out on your social media platform. You know how it goes. Get it done. In the meantime, we will bid you a fond adieu until, well, until I can get Annabelle to agree to come and be a co-host on the live Q&A one oh, Sunday. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'd love to do that. We we'll have to find a time slot that works is the only thing, but I'm sure we'll be able to manage it. It will be easier in the UK, I think. Okay. Yes, it is. It's only, it's only somewhere between 11 and 13 hours difference, depending what time of year it is. So that works a bit better. Yeah. Okay. All right then, wave nicely and say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Bye, everyone. And Thank we'll see you, you next time. Ciao for now.